قل صدق الله فاتبعوا ملة إبراهيم حنيفا وما كان من المشركين Say Allah has spoken the truth Follow Therefore, the religion of Abraham, who was ever inclined to God, and he was not of those who associate partners with God. The holy sage Ibrahim, also known as Abraham, is a renowned patriarch in line of prophethood, who lived around 18th century BC. This is the man to whom all Abrahamic religious adherents, namely the Jews, Christians and Muslims, designate their ascendancy. Hazrat Ibrahim had a unique connection with God Almighty that earned him the title Khalilullah, the friend of Allah. He shunned all forms of idolatry for the sake of God the Almighty. The love of God in the heart of Hazrat Ibrahim والسلام, has no bound. And seeing the infidelity that engulfed the world, particularly his homeland, the Ur of Chaldees, Hazrat Ibrahim migrated under the directive of God Almighty to establish a new nation of believers. Ibrahim والسلام, migrated and founded a land of believers. But the great trial came when his wife Sarah could not give birth till old age. Hazrat Ibrahim salam, thus married an Egyptian lady, Hazrat Hajra, and through her, a first child named Ismail was bestowed to the family of Hazrat Ibrahim salam. A monumental trial came in the life of Hazrat Ibrahim, on whom be peace, when, in accordance with the directive of his beloved Allah, he had to leave his new wife, Hagar, and their only son, Ismail, in the desert of Arabia. O Lord, I have settled some of my children in an uncultivable valley near thy sacred house. The first trial was being barren, but the second trial came when he had to move the child and the mother to the Arabian Peninsula. And when he moved the child and the mother to the Arabian Peninsula, it was not easy for him, but he submitted. To Allah. Allah says, if call Allah who Rabbu who Aslim. Remember the time when his Lord said unto him, Submit. Call Aslam to the Rabbil Alameen. He said, I have submitted to the Lord of the worlds. So he submitted and took the child and the mother there. The mother would have ordinarily reacted. She was a young lady. She would have just said, No, I'm not going. This old man, you want to kill me? She didn't say that. She only asked, Is, this, is it your Lord who has said that you should bring us here? He said yes. Then he said that if it is your, if it's a, if it is the will of the Lord, it will take care of us. The young Ismail and her mother receive sustenance in accordance with the will of Allah the Almighty. Hazrat Ismail was growing excellently under the training of his kind-hearted mother. He reached his youthful age. When he could be of help to his parents and could shoulder some responsibilities for the newly formed community where he belonged, then another huge assignment came around. He had a dream in which he saw himself slaughtering his son. It was not a direct revelation, oh Ibrahim, go and slaughter your son. It was a dream he had. And in a, he, despite the fact that dreams are susceptible to various interpretations, he understood the dream. He, know, he knew he was a prophet of God and he would not just have 
a vain dream. So he understood it and he called his son. Ya Bunaya, oh my son, in Nihara fil Manami anni Azbahuk. I saw myself in my dream slaughtering you. Fanzul Mother Tara. What do you see to eat? And the child responded, Ya Abatif Alma Tukmar. Oh my father, do what you have been commanded to do. Satajiduni insha Allah humina sabirin. By the grace, by the grace of Allah, by Allah's will, you'll find me someone who is patient and submissive. Palamma balagama ahusaya kala ya bunaya inni arafil manami anni azbahu kafanzu maza tara. And when he was old enough to work with him, he said, O oh my dear son, I have seen in a dream that I am slaughtering thee. So consider what thou thinks of it. The sacrifice this time was not limited to the will of Ibrahim alone, not to his will and that of his wife Hajra, but also included the will of his son, who was now the object of sacrifice. Hazrat Ibrahim, on whom be peace, was wholly submitted to Allah's will and ever ready to sacrifice his life. But take a moment to consider the courage and steadfastness of Hazrat Hagar, on whom be peace, who is prepared to face the very real possibility of death along with her young child Ishmael in a barren land without food or water. Ibrahim submitted, والسلام, he submitted to Allah. Ismail was a young man. He could just react. He could say, I want to waste my life. I'm young. You are already old. Why don't you want me to be, you, you don't want me to be as old as you? But he submitted. His, uh, his mother should have reacted. Hajar should have reacted. You, this old man, only the, the only child we have, since all these years, you have not been able to have another one. She did not react. She also submitted. Because it was enough, she would just, she just say, you, do, you, you want to turn me into a wretched person? You want, to, you want me to live a childless life? The only one Allah has given me, you want to take, uh, take him away under the pretext that he says you should kill him? But she did not argue. The wife also submitted. <laughs> O my father, do as thou art commanded, and thou wilt find me, if God pleases, of those who are patient. The submission of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, Hajar radiallahu anha and Ismail to the will of God to the point of offering all that is required from him is just exceptional and one of the rarest level of sacrifice found in human history. The reached an agreement to fulfill the will of Allah. Ibrahim alayhi salam took the young Ismail to the sacrificial point and laid him for sacrifice indicating their firm resolve to fulfill the will of God. Then, what happened? And when they both submitted to the will of God, and he had thrown him down on his forehead, we called him, O Abraham, thou hast indeed 
fulfilled the dream. Thus indeed do we reward those who are good. That surely was a manifest trial. Indeed, it was a manifest trial. All options to disobey were within their reach, but they chose to comply and fulfill the will of Allah the Almighty. Thus, they earned this special reward from Allah and what? And we ransomed him with a great sacrifice. Having made this enormous sacrifice, Hazrat Ibrahim and his family have earned a unique position of honor and reverence in human history. The father of monotheistic faiths, Islam, Judaism, and Christianity. Despite the unending conflict between the three great Abrahamic religions, Ibrahim salam remains a point of unification. He is highly revered by all the Muslims, Christians and Jews. The sacrifice which he and the members of his household made four millennia ago remains the practice of the ardent followers of Ibrahim till date. And this is our joy on Eid al-Adha. But the symbolic representation of the sacrifice is only meaningful when we fulfill its spiritual requirements. And of Abraham who fulfilled the commandments. What Allah wanted him to sacrifice, he had sacrificed. أن العابد في الحقيقة هو الذي ذبح نفسه وقواه وكل من أصباه لرضا رب الخليقة وذب الهوى حتى تهافت وانمحى وذاب وغاب واختفى وهبت عليه عواصف الفناء وسفت ذراته شدائد هذه الهوجاء a servant in real sense is he who slaughters himself and his powers and whatever is within his reach to gain the pleasure of the Lord of all creatures. He sacrifices his ego till it falls off and wipes away melting, disappearing and vanishing. Thereafter, the wave of annihilation is blown over him and his cells shed off the severity of this wave. The real sacrifice grants salvation, and that can be achieved through the sacrifice of one's self-inclination, and having total annihilation to God Almighty. Hazrat Imam Mahdi stated, وَنَحْرُهَا بِمُدَ الْإِنْقِطَاعِ إِلَى اللَّهِ ذِي الْآلَاءِ وَالْأَمْرُ وَالْإِمَارَةِ مَعَ تَحَمُّلِ أَنْوَاعِ الْمَرَارَةِ لِتَنْجُوَ النَّفْسُ مِنْ مَوْتِ الْغَرَارَةِ وَهَذَا هُوَ مَعْنَى الْإِسْلَامِ وَحَقِيقَةَ الْإِنْقِيَادِ التَّامِ وَالْمُسْلِمُ مَنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَلَهُ نَحَرَ نَاقَةَ نَفْسِهِ وَتَلَّهَا لِلْجَبِينَ The servitude that delivers from loss is a sacrifice of self-inciting soul, and its slaughtering to the extent of losing oneself to Allah, who is the Lord of all heights, command and dominion, while bearing all sorts of bitterness in order to save the soul from death in deception. This is the meaning of Islam and the reality of total submission. Therefore, a Muslim is one who submits his face to Allah the Lord of the universe, and to him he slaughters the camel of his soul and lays it to prostration. Following the path of Ibrahim alayhi salam, a Muslim achieves the reality of Eid al-Adha, he has a spiritual transformation 
and moves on a spiritual fleet till he is admitted in the spiritual kingdom of Allah the Almighty. Hazrat Imam Mahdi alayhi salam reiterates this phenomenon from the blessed words of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying Inna al-dahaya hiya al-mataya tusilu ila rabbi al-baraya wa tamuhu al-khataya wa tadfa'u al-balaya Verily, sacrifice is the spirited steed that delivers one to the Lord of all creations. It effaces sins and repels tribulation. Qul inna salati wa nusuki wa mahiyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen 